Welcome back everybody. In today's video, I want to go out to replicate some classic 80s rack tones. I want to get that 80s clean sound happening as well as some over the top lead sounds. And we're going to do it four different ways. I want to show you how you can do it with some rack mounted effects, with some pedals, with the Axe FX3 and with some plugins. So let's get straight into it. For this example, I'm going to be using three different rack processes to get the tone. I'm using the Rocktron Intel FX for its eight voice chorus. I'm using the TC Electronics GeForce for stereo delay. And I'm using the Yamaha SPX90 for its pitch change C program, which is, as I understand it, the Michael Landau patch. So I don't have a Diatronics Tri Stereo Chorus and I don't have an old TC2290 or an Eventide H3000, but these all sound pretty good and they're all relatively affordable now. Before we get into it, this is the dry sound. I've got the JFET compressor in my Axe FX3 together with the Brit JM45 model on the neck pickup of my YJM Strat. <laughs> Let's start with the stereo delays. I have a quarter note and a dotted eighth note delay coming from the G-Force. I think the high cut's at around 8K, trying to emulate something like the old 12-bit rack delays. This is what we get there. So that's step one, we're adding a nice ambient wash with the delay. Let's blend in the eight voice chorus from the Intel FX. This is easily my favorite effect type in the Intel FX because we have control over the depth, rate, and delay time for each chorus voice on top of the delay. <laughs> That's unreal, I love that chorus so much. And finally, let's add the SPX90 D tune on top of all of that. I think I have 11 cents either side for the D tune. The factory preset has like eight cents either side for the D tune, but I like a little bit more width in there. Let's hear all of that with the stereo D tune. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Like I said earlier, you know, these may not be the most legendary rack effects, but they are affordable. And if you program them right, you can get that lush, incredible clean sound happening. Now, I really like it on the bridge pickup with this particular guitar as well. Let's hear it on some dirty sounds. This is my dry, dirty sound, and then we'll add delay, then the Intel effects, and then the SPX9. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
That speaks for itself. That is the rack approach to getting this tone. Next, let's try some pedals. Next, let's try that with some pedals. I've gone with the Strymon Dig as it sets out to emulate classic 80s rack delays. I've got it on the 12-bit mode with the modulation at maximum and the delay ratio at 75%. I've also got the Eventide H9 providing some stereo detune using the micro pitch algorithm. Again, 11 cents either side. But the Dark Horse is a rehoused Yamaha stereo chorus pedal done by my very good friend Johnny at Anarchy Audio. He despises doing rehouse jobs, but when I said, look, I have this old beat up Yamaha stereo chorus that sounds really good. Do you reckon you could maybe put it in a Dragon Ball Z themed enclosure? He was kind enough to do it. So that's what we're gonna hear for chorus. Again, we'll hear delay, we'll add chorus, and we will put the finishing touches on with the detune. Let's go and do that, starting with the dry sound. <laughs> super fun and it's got the vibe there. You can hear that each of those pedals individually has a different character to the other units I was using. The Eventide Detune is a little bit more pronounced and a little bit smoother sounding in general. The biggest difference is obviously the chorus. I have no idea what's happening with that Yamaha chorus. I just kind of like the way it sounds. It sounds a little bit more like an old boss chorus than say the Intellifex 8 voice chorus. But the Strime and Dig is the star of the show there. How good do those rack style delay sounds coming out of that, especially on the distorted lead stuff? Next, let's try and do all of this in the Axe FX. So the Axe FX lets us have a stereo tri chorus mode. I have to use that, that's non negotiable. It sounds so lush. There's also a quad detune mode in the pitch block. So I've gone ahead and dialed that up. Again, it's minus 11 cents either side blended in at max, but then there's just a little bit of a more extreme value in there. I've gone 24 cents of detune either side just to make it sound even wider. Then I'm using the standard stereo digital delay with the time ratio at 75% and a touch of modulation. Let's hear dry, delay, chorus, and then everything. <laughs> Thank you. 
absolutely ridiculous. This is by far, I think, the kind of smoothest and lushest way to do all of this. What I can do, of course, is just dial back the levels and the mix on all of these because it is really easy to overdo these effects. I'm going to bring uh, kind of the mix down on the chorus to about 30%. I'll bring the detune mix down and I'll also bring the delay mix down as well. So here's a more subtle version of that, if you like. <laughs> The wonderful thing about the Axe Effects as well is you can emulate classic units. So here's another example where I've used two multi-tap delays to emulate the Intel FX 8 voice chorus. And then I've got my favorite kind of warmer sounding stereo BBD delay on top of that with the same amount of pitch detune. <laughs> advantage with this approach, of course, is that if you want to really authentically emulate classic rigs, you can do that. If you want to take existing rigs and either kind of make them a little bit more subtle, warmer and cleaner sounding, you can do that. Or you can go the other direction and be even more outrageous. Go like, you know, eight voice chorus, quad D tune, quad tap delays, all that kind of good stuff that would take probably another, you know, three to four rack processes to do. The Axe FX3 handles it quite easily. Last but certainly not least, let's try this with some plugins. I have the Sound Toys Effect Rack dialed up. This is easily in the top three to four plugin bundles that I've ever bought in my life. The Sound Toys stuff just sounds phenomenal. Their Echo Boy is one of my favorite delay units ever. So what we're gonna do is use the Echo Boy Junior for chorus, the standard Echo Boy for the panning delays, and then the Micro Shift plugin to do the stereo detune thing. Let's check it out. Something like that anyway. Like I said, last but not least, these sound amazing. And if you don't wanna go and buy a bunch of hardware, you don't have the money to spend on a big modeler, you just want this sound every now and then. This is probably the most budget conscious way to do this. You also get a bunch of the other awesome sounding Sound Toys plugins. I use their stuff all the time. And actually their little plate reverb, which I think they had for a free download ages ago, I use like just about, every guitar amp recording I do just for a little bit of extra ambience. So top-notch stuff right there from the Sound Toys plugins. I hope you enjoyed all the tones. Please let me know what your favorites were in the comments below. I'd be really curious to know if you liked them at all and if you did like them, what you liked. The thing is, all of these approaches kind of work for me. I wasn't around in the 80s, so I didn't have these sounds like pummeled incessantly into my eardrums. I can understand why some people still can't stand the sound of a chorus pedal at all because it was overdone. Every generation overdoes something with effects. And you know, in the 80s, it was chorus and all these kind of overdone digital delay style things. For me though, it's not even nostalgia. It's just something that when I grew up in the early 2000s, this stuff was at its absolute uncoolest. <laughs> you know, every guitar magazine had someone on the cover saying, 
I don't even know how to play an A chord. It's cool not to be able to play your instrument. And I'm kind of glad that the tide has turned where, you know, understanding how to play things and understanding how your gear works is, you know, it's a valuable skill these days. And all of this stuff for me is super fun. I am lucky enough to kind of play music for a living, but music is also my hobby and old guitar gear is my hobby as well. So it's really fun to pull out the rack stuff. It's really fun to play around with the Axe effects and do it all in one box. Pedals, obviously, are just so hands-on and tactile. And of course, we live in this modern age of plugins. So the, <laughs> the kind of moral of the story is do whatever gets you there. It's not really about the gear, it's about the tones, but you know, Old gear is kind of fun just to dive back into and see what people had to deal with back in the day. I'm so glad that I can use something like the Axe FX or the Sound Toys plugins to get these kind of tones. I don't have to have a refrigerator size rack, but there is that part of me that goes, you know what, if it was good enough for guys like Lukather and Landau, uh, it's probably good enough for me as well. So all up, I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, let me know what tones you enjoyed in the comments and I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching.